Hey guys and welcome back. It's Shala from PS I Love You. Thanks so much for joining me. I have another uh, video today for the Scrap and Stamp blog hop and I started out today with uh, just stamping out uh, a plan of what I wanted to do for today's card. So today's card, uh, my word for today's card is cozy and uh, I had these stamp sets from My Favorite Things and it is cozy weather and then I also had the a little bonus stamp set that I got many years ago, I believe now, and it's called Muniverse. And I just kind of put these two together. And I had an idea of looking through a window at um, this bear being all cozy inside his house and with it snowing outside. And I show, I'm gonna show you how I want to kind of plan that out here in a minute. So what I did is I actually uh, don't have uh, a proper window die that I wanted to use. So I incorporated uh, a die cut pattern that, or cut file I should say, that I actually have for my silhouette machine. Now you don't need to have a silhouette machine to do this. You can just create this from dies that you have or simply sketch and cut it out. So it's really actually pretty simple. And what I did here is this is actually a, a die cut file from Silhouette and I just kind of sized it to fit a standard A2 size card. And this is going to kind of be a window card with some dimension and really scene building here. So I've stamped, as you can see, everything out. I had my plan. I like to plan this, things out first so that I know where I'm going with it. And I wanted to make sure that everything kind of fit inside this window that I die cut out. Okay, so this will also help me to plan how I need to layer my stamps. Now you can absolutely go ahead and stamp each individual image out, color it up, die cut it out or fussy cut it out and then add it in behind your scene. However, uh, I want to not do that today. I want to do some masking and just kind of keep it one layer underneath because I feel like I'm going to have enough bulk and layers going on with my window and the other element that I want to use. Okay, so what you need to remember when you are doing masking is anything that you want to appear in front, you must stamp first, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the sketch. I know I want this to be in the background, so I'm just gonna simply put a B. I know that I want the lamp to be in the background as well. It's going to be behind the bear. I know that the cat has to be stamped behind the basket, so I'm gonna put a little B there. And my basket is going to be in front, so I'm gonna put an F for front. And I think what I want to do is I want to be very careful. I think I'm going to actually stamp this very first because it could potentially overlap my basket. So I'm going to put F1 just so I know that that's one of the very first things I want to stamp first. Now it's not going to impede on my bear so I can actually put him as an F because he's going to be in the front as well and I can actually put him as an F1 as well. So I can stamp these two things at the same time. This is going to be an F2. It'll be the second thing I stamp. The next thing I wanna stamp is, or look at actually here is uh, how these images kind of overlay each other. Well, I know I want my cat to be in front of the fireplace. So I am going to put down here that my cat is the background one, which means I'm going to actually stamp it before the fireplace. So I'm gonna put a B2 so I know that I have to stamp this after my cat, okay? A little bit of confusing, but I find that, that if I plan it out this way, I'm not going to make a mistake. So I have everything labeled, let's just make sure. So the very first thing I'm going to stamp is this ball of yarn and my bear sitting down. Then from there, I'm gonna stamp my basket, and I could potentially stamp this lamp because it's not going to impede on the fireplace or anything else. So I'm gonna put that as either as just a B or an F2. I think I'll stamp it at the same time just so I can um, move a little quicker. So then it's gonna be the basket and the lamp at the same time. So I'm gonna remove this B and then from there, I know I'm going to do my cat. That's going to be my background one. And then I'm going to do the fireplace. Now, if you want, you can actually 
number these just one, like one, two, uh, three, four, five, and six, if that's easier for you. But it just helps me uh, to understand where I want things to go if I put the B and the F. I know that it's going to be in the foreground and that I have to put a mask over top. If it has an F, um, typically that means I need to have a mask for it. Um, except for this one. I'm gonna, I'll keep that B there just so I know that I don't need a mask for it. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Now I'm going to bring out my little stamping platform. Now I want to use this because I'm going to use this to line up my stamps. And I want to create, let's see, how do I want to do this? I'm going to grab some cardstock and I will, what will I do? Actually, you know what? I think I'm brave enough. I also cut, this is the other part for the um, die cut that I purchased. So it's kind of a layering one. Um, it actually had, this one came I think with a bird and some trees, but I'm just using the window. So I think I am going to be brave enough and just stamp it directly onto here instead of a panel. So let's give that a try. So I will do it this way so everything can lay flat. I will put my bear here. I might have to line them up a little more center. Try that. Okay. Make sure it's all to the top and to the right of my stamp platform. And I might actually use just a wee bit of purple tape to, oh, that one's got, surprise, surprise, a little bit of cat hair on it. But I think I'm gonna use a little bit of a purple tape just to help keep this pattern piece or my draft piece in place on top of the cardstock so it doesn't move. That's the last thing I want. And I'm gonna just put this on the back of my hand a couple times. Just, it's, the purple tape's usually pretty good, but I just wanna ensure I don't have any ripping because again, I'm not uh, putting a panel over top of this. So we'll just tape this down so it doesn't go anywhere at all. Okay, so now the first thing that we need to do is pick out our stamps. Sorry, hopefully you can see this. All right, I've already got a mess going on. So again, the very first things we're going to stamp is our uh, little ball of yarn and our bear. And I'm going to bring in, I usually like to keep some packaging uh, because I already stamped this out on my uh, little plan here. My stamps have ink on them. I didn't wanna have to clean them each time. So I'm just going to lay this packaging over top and that way it won't muck up anything. I won't get ink on anything I don't want. And it also allows me to line this up nicely. Okay, so we don't wanna do the fireplace. We wanna do the ball of yarn. And I might just have to move this closer to me just so I can see what I'm doing and make sure I'm lining it up properly. Okay, so I've got the ball of yarn. Line that. Oh, whoops, and then the bear, okay? And just lay this and try and match it up to what you've already stamped on your little plan. Hopefully my head doesn't get in the way. I'm wearing a cap today, so you'll probably see that. Okay. That looks pretty good. So I'll close my door right away and lift this up. And then what I can do is I can ink it up. Now I'm going to use Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I'm going to do Copic coloring. If you're not using Copics or alcohol ink markers, you can definitely use like a, the Versafine pigment if you're doing like watercolors. These are, I think these are, um, set for watercolors or even if you want to use colored pencils that's always fun as well. I started out using the colored pencils just because I didn't have the techniques for Copic coloring and I'm getting better I'm not the best but you know every day I'm getting a little bit better the more you practice the better you get. So I'll ink this up with my Memento 
And then we simply remove this for half a second. Just the bottom, I'm gonna flip it like this so I can get it back in properly. Like that, and then I'm gonna stamp this down. All right, pray for me that this goes well. <laughs> it's all nice up to the top. And we'll stamp him down. I have this handy little thing that I use on my stamp platform. It's actually from a, a, some sort of game that my son had, but it works perfectly. He doesn't mind me using it, so that's good. And then hopefully that's a nice, good image. I might have to double stamp it. I think I'll give it another bit of ink. And we'll go ahead and do that one more time, just so it's a nice clear image. I can always go over it as well with a black Copic marker liner after. So there, there's our front images. Now, remember we need to create masks. So I'm just going to lay this piece of uh, masking paper over top. Now I am just using the Avery large, like create large labels. I'm just using these. Um, they work really well. They're removable. They don't rip your paper. Um, but I prefer to use the Gina K masking magic tape. I, I ran out. I don't have any right now. So um, th this will have to do. This is my backup. So I'll just lay this over top, I can see the image kind of underneath, so I know where it's going to stamp. And then I'm not even going to re-ink it. Again, it's just, just my mask, okay? And then press that down, and voila. Now I'm going to put this aside because I do want that to dry. Um, it, sometimes it smudges, so we'll let it dry really well, and I'm going to add some more masks to this as well. So we'll put this aside and then the next thing we need is I go back to my little drawing. Again putting a little piece of tape here lets me fold it over and back and making sure I get it in the right spot. Then the next image that I need is my front two and that's the little basket. Now I'm not going to stamp the basket down onto the back. I want to create my mask first. And I have a few little scrap pieces here that I'm going to use. So let's take these off. And you can do your stamp your mask images down first onto your masking paper if you want. That's just fine. I'm going to do it quickly this way. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll grab a, just grab a stamp block and then I'll create all my masks maybe first. Okay, so then we need the basket. So it doesn't really matter where I put it right now because I'm just going to make the mask. So I'll quickly just Stamp that down. And then the next image is our cat. We need our cat on there. Like this. And what else needs a mask? Um, the, we've got the bear. He needs a mask. That needs a mask. This needs a mask. And the cat. So that's it. These ones don't need masks to them. The lamp and the fireplace, because they're in the background, um, they don't need masks. They'll be stamped last. So this is perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off for a second and I'll fussy cut these out. I'm going to be using my uh, Cutter Bee scissors. They're my favorite. They're nice and sharp and will help me get close and in around these detailed little corners. So I'll be back once I get these masks all cut out. Okay, so I am back. I finished cutting out my masks and when I'm cutting small detailed images out, I like to have a little a bowl or a tray, someplace to put them because I always find I lose them on my desk. I don't know if that happens to you, but I get busy creating and 
um, something gets stuck to my sleeve because I always wear a sweater. I'm downstairs I'm in the basement where it's a little bit cooler. So uh, something gets stuck to me, it gets uh, pushed on the floor. So I like to keep just a little uh, bowl or a plate or something just to put my images on so they don't get lost. Now when we're talking about masking, um, it de depending on how detailed your image is, um, is how detailed you have to cut it out. So as you can see with this bear, um, I cut really detailed around the top and around his head and the edges, but I didn't really get too worried about the bottom and inside. And the reason why that is, is I can take a look at my little plan here that I stamped out, and I can see that there's nothing intersecting with the lines down kind of underneath the chair. So that means I don't have to worry about getting really detailed for any other stamp to stamp over top of that. Now when you're looking up here in the left hand side of the bear's arm close to his head and on the right hand side you can see it intersects with the fireplace and the lamp. So I need to make sure that I'm cutting really nice and close around here so that the images of the lamp can get stamped nicely. Um, if you can't get too close just because of how the image is, if there's hair, not to worry. You can always go back in with a Copic liner and fill in any lines that didn't get stamped because of how thick your mask was around your image. Okay, so that's just kind of how I plan out how close I fussy cut things is wherever other images would intersect with it. Another example is here with the cat. I needed to make sure that I cut through his tail just because of where the fireplace intersects here. Again, I could have just roughly cut around and not worried about that and just filled it in with a ruler and a Copic marker, but um, my Cutter B scissors worked really well to get in there, so it wasn't, uh, wasn't too hard on this image. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. So now that we have our masks done, we can go ahead and finish the rest of our stamping. So let's take a look at what we've already stamped. We've already stamped our front first images. So we've done the yarn and the bear. Let's take a look what we have next. So we've done our F1s and I'm going to just put a little check mark so I know that I've already done those. The next one I'm going to work on is F2, the front two, and that's the basket. So we'll find our basket image and I want to be careful my yarn could very well possibly overlap. So let's go ahead and put our mask on top of our yarn, just in case. I would hate to make the mistake of not masking it. We'll be safe here. And this one's a bit tricky, so I'm going to pull out a little pokey tool here. This is my tonic craft pick, just to help me get the backing of this paper up. You can use a pin or uh, sometimes the pointy end of your reversible tweezers will work. Just get it split there enough for me to pull it apart. Now I'm also going to use my reversible tweezers just to lay this down. It is a small image and we'll just lay this over top. More concerned about the top of the yarn um, rather than lining the whole thing up perfectly, just where it's, I know it's going to intersect with that basket, right? Okay, so we put this back down. Now we're going to line up our stamp. Again, I like to use this acetate just in case so I don't mess up my plan or accidentally get ink on my project. And I'll line this up. I might have to move this closer to me. Maybe if I stand and look right over. See if that looks lined up. I think that looks pretty good right there. And then I can close the lid. Remove the acetate lift up my little plan and I'm going to ink up with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink 
and then I can just oops, stamp it down. Just like that. Perfect, and it did intersect just a little bit, so I'm very glad that I went ahead and masked that. Okay, let's take a look at our images again. Make sure I put that back down. All right, and I'm a little bit off. I can see underneath. Just when I lifted up this tape, lift it off. So I'll use my little tape hinge again. There, that should work nicely. All right. So then I can see I've done my F2. All right, now we're going to look at our background images. Oh, I could have done this at the same time, but I didn't. That's okay. We can do it now. So I'll remove my little basket. I was just concerned about my, my masking there. And oh, before we do that, I have to mask my bear because it's going to intersect. Let's go ahead and get the mask on our bear before we forget that. I find that I easily get distracted when I'm crafting and I get going too fast and I sometimes forget that's again why I like to plan everything out on a piece of paper. As well if I do happen to create a card that I really really liked I, I have a plan of how I created it. I don't have to worry about taking a picture of my card. Um, what I, I have right now is I'm just collecting my little my little plans and I think what I'll eventually do is either scan or take a picture of them and upload them into my computer and then that way I can have an inventory and you know if I need to recreate I want to recreate a card again I can see where I can find my plans and then just easily recreate it. This one's really hard. Maybe my fingernail will help me. Hmm. I'd have to get a little more aggressive with this one. It's not splitting as nicely as the yarn one did. Again, that's why I like the Gina K as well. It seems to... Masking magic. Backing will come off a little easier. Okay. Success. All right, I'm going to use my little tweezers again just to make sure I can line it up nicely. Again, paying attention. I know that it intersects here and here, so paying attention that my mask definitely covers those lines. And so it goes high enough. I don't have to so much worry about the bottom, but it's definitely... Up and right hand side there. Try that one more. Oh no! One more time. Maybe if I start at the top and work my way down. I want to make sure that you guys can see, but sometimes it makes it harder for me to see. Good on that side. And should be okay here. Alright, I think that's going to be okay. And now I'm going to lay this down. I might have to line it up again. My little hinge moved. Should have used brand new tape or cut the top of this a bit, but that's okay. It's still working. See enough of it. There we go. And then I can just grab my lamp, lay it down over top. Looking that looks fairly good. I might have to stand it again. Got some light glaring going on. And I think that looks okay. Close my lid. My acetate and 
it. Let's ink up our lamp. You know, it takes a little more work to do the masking, but it is so worth it for the result that you get. You know, I can go ahead and close this down. Gently press. You don't want to give it CPR or anything, just light presses, otherwise you can actually mush the, the image. You want a nice, clear, crisp image. That looks good. And then the last part is the fireplace. So let's go ahead and... No, it's not. What do we need next? We need the cat next. Oh, see, good thing I had my plan. So we've done that. Next is our cat. Remove the lamp. Grab our acetate again. Our cat. And I need to remember to put the mask on my basket. Because the cat goes in front of the, or will be inside the basket. Lift this up. Now we're going to add our mask on to the basket. That one was easier. Just like this. And then we can ink up our kitty cat. Again, if you've seen my fundamentals of scene building, you know that I like to tell a little story. My who, what, when, where, why, and how of building a scene. So the story I'm telling in my head is that this little bear was outside shoveling the snow after a snowstorm and he came inside when he was done and lit a fire to warm up and have a hot cup of tea or cocoa and as he's resting Enjoying the nice fire, his little kitty cat, who had been playing with a ball of yarn, came in and starting to snuggle up next to him in the basket and was enjoying the fire as well. So my who, what, when, where, why, and how is how I decide how to build these scenes. And my how of this card is, um, again, it's going to be my window, 3D kind of dimensional window scene card, and I'm going to have a snow element, and I'll show you that again in a second. So I need to bring my little plans back, line everything up, because my little hinge trick I was pulling on it too hard. There we go. This lined up. And then I'm going to put my acetate down. So I've done all of these. The last thing I need to do is my fireplace. I'll lay that down. Just stand up here so I can see. That looks okay. Sometimes the stamps stick to my fingers. Kind of drives me nuts. Okay. All right, this is the last element. Fingers crossed, everything goes well. Let's pick this up. Have some ink on my fingers. I don't want to touch anything. And I've got all my masking down that I need. So I can go ahead, ink up the fireplace, and stamp it down. Ink that again. Use my little smoothing tool. That's why the stamp positioner when you're building scene cards is so important. You have to 
double stamp something and you're doing it with a block, then oh my goodness, I can never get them lined up straight. I know people like um, Gina Kay or Jennifer McGuire can do it and I give them kudos. There's no way I can, can get it down twice in the same spot just with a block. I seem to be having some troubles with that fire there. There, that should be good. I can fill again any any areas that are a little light there. I'll trace over it with my Copic liner. Okay, so there we go. We've got our scene stamped out and the moment of truth is actually when we go ahead and lift these stamps up to see if we stamped it correctly. So let's go ahead and do that. Now what I like to do is I like to reuse these stamps, or these masks, sorry, and I'm just going to simply place them on top of my packaging. You can get a good couple uses out of these, which is nice, especially when you're spending money on the mask, masking paper. It can get expensive if you do a lot of one layer seam cards or masking. So we know that that worked out well. I'm going to do our cat next. Now you kind of have to go in reverse order to lift everything up if you want to save your stamps, otherwise they could rip. I'll save the little kitty cat. He's with a different stamp set. Basket. Oh, look at that. He's right in there. That looks perfect. And then our ball of yarn. Yay! All right, I'll give you a closer look. We got everything stamped down nicely. Look at that. We took the time again um, using this method of making sure you plan everything out. Um, another thing you can do to use this for is uh, if you want to test out to see some coloring, you can do some practice coloring on here to see if you like certain colors together and then you won't mess up. Sometimes what I like to do is after I get an image stamped out, I have a photocopier so I might photocopy it and try different color combinations to see what I like best and then I know I'm not going to mess up my perfectly stamped card piece. Okay guys, I am going to go ahead and get this all colored up. I'm not going to show you my coloring because I'm not the best colorer. Uh, you want to look at somebody like Kelly Latavola for that but uh, hopefully one day I'll be good enough to show you so I will be back when this is all colored up. Okay, so I have finished all my coloring with my Copic markers and I really like how it turned out. I think it looks super cute. And I'm taking a look at the little templates that I have and there's some score lines already in our template that I cut out with the Silhouette Cut file. So for this one I fold the bottom up and then I fold this one again. So it kind of frames the bottom of it. And with the frame of our window panel, you're going to fold it down and then this one in. Hopefully that makes sense. So that when you place these together like this, you can see it's got this beautiful little kind of shadow box to it. Now I do want to attach this to a top of a A2 size card. So I think what I might actually do as well is put an extra score line in here so that I can fold it and it will fit into an envelope properly. Otherwise, if I do it this way, I have to either fold it down this way and I'm going to need a larger envelope. So I'm gonna see if I can go ahead and do that. So let me come back. I'm gonna see if that works. I'm gonna bring out my a scoreboard and then I'm going to score it down the center here. Okay, so I went ahead and I added another score line to these pieces. So it was about an inch from here to here from these two score lines that the machine cut. So I added one just so that I could fold it up nicely. So that this was about one inch, so I scored it at a half inch. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some strong score tape. This is the Be Creative score tape. It's really great when you're creating cards that have interactive features to them. It's nice and strong, will keep things in place. And I'm going to add the score tape to this flap where we're going to place, let's fold it up so that we can attach it to the bottom of this frame. So let me go ahead and put some score tape there. And again, I'll link the products that I use down below on this video as well as over at the blog. Make sure you check that out as well as all the blog hop participants blogs and videos that they have as well. We've got such a creative team. And I'll add some to this one here. Alright, so this is ready to go once I want to assemble it. I also cut a frame that will go over top of this just to give it a little bit more interest. And this is just from some brown cardstock. But I think what I want to do is add some stamping over top of this. So I'm going to grab my wood grain stamp, I think. That would be a nice, a nice look for over top of this. So let me find that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have this beautiful barn wood background stamps from the Concord and Ninth set, and I'm just going to stamp this over top. Now I took the foam insert out of my Stamp Perfect, and because I need to stamp the entire surface of this piece, I've just folded over some purple tape, and I'll just apply it to the back of this piece just to hold it in place in case I need to double stamp. Won't be able to add any magnets to this. I'll just stick this down. And the reason why I removed the foam insert is this is a fairly thick stamp and I wanna make sure that it stamps down nicely. So, go ahead and adhere that to the lid of my project. Now it's going to be super sticky because it's also going to stick to the bottom of this. So let's see. Oh, there we go. All right. Now I also have this walnut stain distress ink and I think that would look nice and I'll just put it around the edge of where the stamp is going to stamp down on my cardstock frame. That should be good. And then I will go ahead and stamp this. Hopefully it looks how I imagined in my head. Let's see. Kind of want a tree look. Hmm, didn't stamp down as well as I had hoped. So I'm going to add some more ink and I think I wonder if keeping that foam piece in would have been better but that's okay we'll make it work we'll give it a little CPR really push down hopefully that'll give me the look I'm looking for I think that's better let's open it up and see it's really stuck on there, so that's a good sign. Not as much, well, that's okay. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to cheat a bit. So, lay this down, upside down, and I've got my hand on there. I'm actually going to pull this up, and then I'll just use my fingers to run it along. Hopefully that'll work. I probably should have left that foam piece in, but that's okay. We'll make it work. All right, let's see. Oh, look at that, that looks a lot better. I like how that turned out. Okay, so perfect, I'm gonna set this aside. A little trial and error, but that's all right. And then now what I can do is I will adhere this down 
onto the front of my panel. I think that's going to look really nice. I'm going to wipe my fingers off. I got a little bit of ink all over. I have a ton of these microfiber cloths that I like to keep around just to wipe my hands off when I need to. I also have some baby wipes. I think this will work just to dry them off. And I think what I'll use, yeah, I'm going to use the score tape on this as well. And might use the, th no, this one will be fine. Okay, let's use this one. And I'll put the score tape all the way around this frame. And then we'll adhere it down. Okay, now that I have the tape on there, make sure I put it on the proper side. So this is going to adhere this way. So I'll need to put this on top. And I'm not going to actually release the entire piece because if I do that, it might get stuck down where I don't want it to be. So I'm just going to fold these over. And then once I get it in the proper place and ready to press down, then I will pull them out. I like to do this to ensure that either I get things straight or again, sometimes it sticks down where I don't want it to. Just peel half of it off on each piece and then fold it to the outside. That gives me some little handles like this. Okay, now turn it over, try and line it up as straight as possible. A little difficult to see, I might have to bring it closer to myself. Let's try. See if that looks okay. Somewhat even. Yeah, that's not too bad. Again, this allows me to move it around just a little bit to get perfect placement. Could go over a bit, but you know what? That's okay. I think. I think it's close enough. Might have a little more on this side. It might have. Yeah, I've pushed it down too much now, but that's okay. Let's just go with this. It'll be fine. Then I can pull the rest of the release paper off. Hopefully everybody will be so amazed at the inside of this scene they won't realize that the frame's just a bit off. Okay. And then now we can see how cute that is. Look at that. I love how that looks. Okay, so the next step is let's, let's adhere this piece down. You know, I was going to try and make it snow, but I don't think that's going to be a possibility. I was going to see if I could have it kind of an interactive card with it snowing on the outside, but I think that would just take away. I think I really like it just like this. So let's go ahead and remove this score tape. Maybe on my next one, maybe what I'll do on my next one is I'll make a thicker frame and then that way I can use, what is it, uh, the MFT has the stamp set, or sorry, the die set here. This one, um, it is the cloudy rain clouds. I'll have to, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but I've wanted this forever and I finally got it. And I was thinking about using this and if I was going to use, I probably should have done this first and then put it underneath this frame and strung the, the, um, 
little twine with the beads through it. I have this transparent nylon um, thread here and I just think that might be too much. Maybe I'll try it on another card but for today um, I think I'll just go simple. If you want to try it that's what definitely what you can use is this die here. I'll link it again uh, down below and as well over on the blog and you could definitely add just use this piece here and add it underneath and with some foam tape you can string this along add some beads and maybe adhere some snowflakes that when you tip it down it snows outside. But I think yeah today we're just going to keep it simple. So I'll go ahead and adhere this straight onto here as straight as I can make it. Probably easier if I turn it over and line it up to the edge of that score line. And then I'm not going to worry about this because we're actually going to adhere this part onto our A2 size card. So no one will see that. And then I can go ahead, peel this off, and try and line it up again as straight as possible. Probably should have left some of this on here just so it doesn't stick down where I don't want it to go. This is such great strong adhesive that sometimes it is too strong and sticks down when you don't want it to. So I think that will be good. Line it up and then I'll just pull Oops, pull this release paper out. Try that again. Line it up, pull it out, push it down, ta-da! All right, so the nice thing is, is this will lay a lot flatter in the envelope and then it'll pop back up. Okay, so let's get our card base and we'll adhere this down onto our card base. Okay guys, I am back with a finished card and just to let you know, this card base measures six and a half by, I think it is, yes, by five inches. So I really like the way that that turned out. I think the red uh, frames it nicely and it warms the whole card up as well as uh, draws your attention to that red of the rug as well. Uh, I like how the shadow is cast on top of the uh, colored image on the background. Uh, we could have also adhered some clear acetate to the back of this piece to really give it a real uh, picture, or sorry, a real window image. Um, but I think this is super cute the way it is and I really hope the recipient will like it. I love that this can flatten down and fit into the envelope nicely and then when the recipient pulls it out of the envelope it pops up. So I think that is uh, super cute. We've got our sentiment on the inside. A perfect day is one spent with you and I really enjoyed spending my time with you today. I hope you did as well. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and if you haven't checked out the other uh, blog hop participants cards, please make sure that you head on over to the link down below and uh, I'll link all the their uh, sites over on my blog. Thanks so much again guys and have a great weekend.